Ladies and gentlemen, we often hear this objection against the statues, the icons. Icons is a Greek word meaning images, sacred images. Uh, this is the objection from Exodus 20 verses 2 and following, actually verse 4. You shall not make yourself a carved image. So immediately many denominations ban any, contrary to what you see here in this wonderful church, the, here also the, the, some images, painting, some sculptures. So they say that all this is forbidden, all this goes against the Bible. By the way, this objection is shared by the Jewish world and by the Islamic world. Well, let us take the text in its context. The Jewish people were in Egypt, and in Egypt there was for them the risk of idolatry. Idolatry meaning the, to worship, to adore, as divinities, the idols of the pagans, or similar to those uh, of the pagans, like uh, when the Jews made the uh, golden calf. I am the Lord, I am Yahweh your God. You shall have no gods except me. You shall not make yourself a carved image. Which means, you shall not make yourself another god except me. In, in Hebrew, you have it negdi. Negdi means before me, in front of me, against me. Are these gods in front of God, before God, against God? Certainly not. You shall not bow to them you shall not adore them, for I, Yahweh, the Lord, am a jealous God. So, God, the only God, Yahweh, the Lord, does not want that the Israelites, who are in the middle of pagan nations, that they do like the nations, that they adore, that they make, and worship idols, I-D-O-L-S. The church has always claimed that these pictures, statues, icons you see in our churches and houses are not idols, are not divinities, are not gods that we adore, worship with God or without God, never. They are only signs. They are images which call to our minds the persons they represent. By the way, in Colossians 1.16, we read that Jesus in his human nature is ikon to theuto auratu. That Jesus himself is the image, the icon of the unseen God. But before going to the New Testament, let us read again the text in its context. So, is every image an idol? Included my your photograph on your passport, your ID card, is painting already a sin against God? Of course not. Or whatever you, we have, films, videos, uh, DVDs, and nowadays YouTube, Facebook, and all these you have images. The carved image in itself is not different than the film image. So, 
Let us go again to Exodus, Exodus 20. The Israelites were in Egypt and the alphabet, the hieroglyphic alphabet was formed of images and pictures. So what does the context tell us? Do not adore them, do not make of them divinities. But in this same book of Exodus, chapter 25, by the way you find these and other answers in the book uh, author, uh, whose author is uh, Father Yaqub Saadi, born in Jaffa, Palestine. Jaffa is north of Jerusalem. And Father Yaqub Saadi, the book was written in Arabic, Al Jawab in Al Kitab. Here is the English version Faith and Scripture. Well, the same book of Exodus. Chapter 25, verses 10, 16, 18, 20. God asks Moses, the same Moses, to whom and by whom it was said, You shall not make yourself a carved image. God says to him, the same Yahweh, You are to make me, to make me Yahweh, an ark of acacia wood. Inside the ark you will place the testimony. For the two ends of the throne of mercy, you are to make two golden cherubs or cherubims, sorts of angels. You are to make them of beaten gold. Make the first cherub for one hand and the second for the other. And fasten them. The cherubs have to have their wings spread upwards. So here are wings again. So that they overshadow the throne of mercy. So the same God who says, who said, do not make, here says, make. Is there any contradiction? Certainly not, because these carols are not meant to be gods, are not meant to be worshipped, but to help people to worship God. There's no contradiction like when we say to people, Drink and do not drink. Drink water, do not drink poison. Exodus 37, 7. Here is the execution. Moses made the golden carols. He made them of beaten gold. They had their wings spread upwards so that they overshadowed the throne of mercy. Now Solomon, Solomon received similar orders to make statues and images in the temple. The first book of Kings, which is the third book of Kings in the Greek. Verse 6, chapter 6, verse 23. In the Debir, he made two cherubs of olive wood. Cherubs, angels of olive. Olive wood, sorry. Verse 28, and he plated the cherubs with gold. Verse 29, all around the temple walls, Solomon carved figures of cherubs, palm trees, and rosettes, both inside and outside. Verse 23, Solomon carved cherubs, palm trees, and rosettes. First book of Kings, which is the third according to the Greek. Chapter 8, verses 6 to 7. The priests brought the Ark of the Covenant. In the Holy of Holies, under the cherub's wings, they spread their wings and sheltered the ark. Thus, in the same book of Kings, the first, chapter 10, verses 19 to 20, the throne had six steps and bull's heads, which means images and statues at the back of it, and arms, of course not human arms, at either side of the seat, two lions stood beside the arms. And twelve lions stood, well, they didn't bring the lions from the forest or from the zoo. Now let us take the text of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 7 to 8. The people 
again God says, make. The people came and said to Moses, we have sinned by speaking against Yahweh and against you. Intercede for us with Yahweh to save us from these serpents. Moses interceded for the people and Yahweh answered. It's the same Yahweh who said, do not make idols. He says now to the same Moses, make a fiery serpent. Serpent, a snake. And put it on a standard. If anyone is bitten and looks at it, he shall live. So Moses fashioned a bronze serpent, which he put on a standard. And if anyone was bitten by a serpent, he looked at the bronze serpent and lived. And the Lord Jesus says in John 3.14, the Son of Man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert. So why, why in the first place or in the last place, all these icons, statues, images, God does not need them. We need them as human beings. We have the most important sense in us is sight. The very word of idea. When we say idea meaning thought. Where does the word idea come from? Come from in Greek. Idea comes from idein, which is a form of the verb to see. Idea in Greek means sight. What we see then becomes an insight and the philosophers teach us that nothing enters our intelligence without passes, without passing by our senses of the most important of which is sight. And this is why nowadays, well nowadays is at least 60 years or so, the audio visual, the visual methods in teaching are very efficient because then you see a picture and you remember and the picture gives you an idea. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I do hope, of course, this, uh, this um, shot was very brief, very short, but I do hope that it makes things clearer and when we quote the Bible, we are supposed to see the whole image. It's like when you drive. If you just fix one point, then you might miss the rest and make a car accident. We have to look at the big picture. All what the uh, Bible says, crowning all this with Colossians 1.16, Jesus himself is the icon is the picture of the living God. What do we notice, by the way? We notice representations of Christ in some denominations outside the Catholic and the Orthodox Church, but we hardly see any representations, for instance, of the Virgin Mary or of others. Since the incarnation of the Word of God, John 1.14, it was more possible than ever to see, to touch, uh, the, and to hear the Word of God. That's what the Word of Life, that's what exactly the first letter of John starts with. What we have seen, what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hands have touched from the Word of Life, which means Jesus, was the life of the world, well, this we announce to you. Thanks such a lot.